Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Simon Says Stamp. Today we are going to be talking about using up your watercolor paper scraps. I have a um, 9.5 by 12 pad, so I always have scraps all over the place. And I'm using the um, Under the Sea Animals, I, the stamp sets and the dies, and then I also pulled out my stitch rectangles and um, stitch circles. So these are kind of just all of the um, little pieces that I have left over. I don't typically come up with a card layout, but because I have very specific pieces to use, I did kind of just give myself a little map. So I drew out where I wanted them to go or what ideas I had for them. Some of them I ended up changing as I went along um, and that's perfectly fine. Like just, you know, whatever works for you. I just like to have a game plan going in because I am limited to the size of what I have. I'm going to be doing um, a bunch of Distress Oxide watercolor backgrounds. Um, I really, really love Distress Oxides. They kind of dry with like a little bit of a chalky finish and they have a different look than regular Distress Inks. You can do this with either one of them. I just um, really wanted to play with the um, Distress Oxides, especially since I uh, recently got the newest set. So basically, I'm working on this Canson watercolor paper. All of it is the same, um, and I'm just dropping in color. This one in particular, I did a wet on wet technique. So I wet the entire paper first and then dropped in some color. I did have some pooling. I didn't tape any of these down, guys, none. Um, these bigger pieces I probably could have, but because... Um, I had very specific sizes in mind of what I could use with the dies. Um, I didn't really want to give up the edges. Even this one, um, I'm just splattering on some clean water and I'm going to blot that up to kind of break up a little bit of that color. Um, but even this one, I didn't go far enough out to the edges. I had to go back and add more color to the edges after I thought I was done. So in order to just give this a little bit of movement, I knew this was going to be the one um, for my fish background, and I wanted them to be swimming. The little sentiment that goes with them says, um, keep swimming, just keep swimming, you know, like Dora the, or, um, I was going to say Dora the Explorer, my kid watches that, um, Dory from Finding Nemo. Um, but anyway, so I was just doing some little like wavy lines or striping for this piece, um, I'm doing wet on dry. So basically my paintbrush is wet, my paper is dry, and um, I wanted kind of a gradient. This is going to go for my whale. Here I got smart enough to at least check the sizes to make sure that um, I was watercoloring a large enough area for the dye that I had planned for it. And um, I'm just basically doing a, a four color blend. So this one I think is um, Blueprint Sketch, which I'm totally in love with, by the way. Salty Ocean, Mermaid Lagoon, and um, Peacock Feather. So I wanted it to get lighter as it went toward the top because I wanted to it to look like my whale was kind of like breaking the surface of the water. So once I was happy with the way that those were blended, I'm going to go back in and just do some little dots of color in the background. I really like breaking up my backgrounds. And for this one, I put a lot of water into my peacock feathers and then I splattered that on and it creates almost like, I call them blooms, but it's almost like a crystal look um, where it breaks up that color. For this background, I wanted to get a little bit more green. Um, I, I just, I guess I didn't want them all to be the same colors, not only because um, I wanted them to have a little bit of a different look, but I also, you know, it's fun to play with different colors. Who doesn't like playing with different color blends? And this is like the perfect time to get a idea of what you like together. Um, so for this one, I kind of did the same thing that I did before and I wasn't really loving it. So I dried it down and then I'm going to go back in and add another layer of color so that it is more vibrant. That's always something that you can do. Watercolor, um, even though this isn't traditional watercolor, it's, it's distress inks, they always dry back. So if you want them to be more intense after it's dry, if you're just not happy with the result, then go back in and add another layer. That's definitely always an option for you. And that's what I did here. 
And then once I was happy with the intensity of it, again, I kind of wanted to break that up a little bit. So I'm just doing clean water on the wet background. So it will push the colors to the edges of the splatters. And then I dried that down and put more splatters on it. And then those ones I picked up. So just two kind of different ways to remove color. For this one, this is my snail background. I knew I wanted him to be like scooting along the edge, um, like bottom of the ocean. So I used gathered twigs for this one at the bottom. And then it's going to, again, get lighter as it moves towards the top of the water, or in this case, top of the panel. Um, but blue and brown work really, really well together. Um, so that isn't something that you, you know, have to be worried about. There's a reason that beaches are beautiful. Um, they do work really nicely. And so I just kind of striped it a little bit so that I would have some good color. Here I'm going to use the spatters to create some texture on the bottom of my ocean. So I'm just splattering on that gathered twigs and I just used a scrap piece of paper to protect my um, water portion. For this one, this is going to be three separate die cuts because I have three little tiny pieces of paper here. I wanted them to be painted like one picture though, even though I'm going to die cut them separately. So I just used some, what is this, 3M post-it note tape to hold them together while I painted them. So everything would be, um, like it would have the continuity of one painted piece before I um, die cut them all out. So here I was, I didn't re-ink, I'm working on a Ranger craft mat by the way, and I just smush my, um, my palette, like I smush it to make a palette, why can't I talk? Um, anyway, and so I wanted them, um, I didn't redo them before the last card, and I needed to, so that's why these colors are so light. In a minute here, I'm going to take a break and just, um, kind of smush down those new colors so that that way I can get a pretty heavy pigment. For this one, I did add in, um, what is it, Wilted Violet, just to get a little bit more of that purple in there because I think it's really pretty, especially with the blueprint sketch. And again, I just wanted more of that vibrancy um, in between the blue and the gathered twigs, the blue and the brown this time. I actually used... Um, some antique linen just to kind of break that up a little bit. And again, I'm using the um, wet on dry. So it is a little bit more uh, broken. And that one I just left completely smooth. I didn't add any spatters to it whatsoever. For this one, this is going to be my large circle. And I just wanted something that was kind of fun and pretty. I wanted to bring in some more of those purples and a little bit of pink um, just to kind of, again, break up that color palette. So I used um, the Peacock Feathers, Salty Ocean, Wilted Violet, and Picked Raspberry for these ones. I didn't even measure to see if the circle would fit um, because I wasn't worried. I thought that the organic edges would kind of be pretty. And in the final piece, there are a few just white areas. This time when I spatter on, um, I'm actually spattering on color because I like when they mix together. I think that's pretty. I dried this down and then again, just to kind of break that up, I am doing just clean water and lifting that away so the piece looks a little bit more uh, dynamic. It kind of looks like acid wash to me, these distress oxides, like when you remove the color, which I really love. This background is going to be ugly. Even I know it's ugly and I painted it. Um, basically, I'm starting with a circle in the center and then I am using um, different blues, purples, pinks all the way out to the edge. It doesn't matter that this is ugly because I'm going to die cut it. So it's not going to look like this final piece in the end. Um, and that's one of the things to keep in mind. Like if you have a background that you're you're like, wow, I don't really love this, um, think about the way that you're going to use it and whether or not that's going to be the way that the final piece looks. I wanted to use this one where I had a um, medium-sized circle in the center and then the circles kind of like broke apart. Um, so I just needed the colors to blend together. I didn't need them to look pretty on this particular piece of paper. Uh, I just did more clean, clear water on this one and then dried that down. And then here's all of them um, just dry and complete so you can kind of see what they look like. Um, 
they are the different but the same. I feel like they look like they could be part of a card set and that was ultimately my goal. From here we're going to move on to the Copic coloring. I am stamping in Intense Black Ink from Simon Says Stamp because it is Copic safe and I just have all of my undersea animals laid out here. I'm going to go ahead and stamp those down. This is Nina um, Solar White 80 pound cardstock. The only thing that I did do is I went back in and stamped a bunch of fish because I wanted a school of fish. When I was looking at, um, before I even started doing the backgrounds, I kind of looked at what my little sea creatures were going to be and tried to pay attention to the colors that they would be. So this little crab, totally adorable, um, I knew that he was going to have to be on a background, um, but I didn't want to use red. I didn't want to make him red. So I decided that I would make him more of a dark pinkish purple. And I thought that that would work really well for a card that had the wilted violet and the picked raspberry in it. This is the first time that I have used this particular Copic combination. And so when I'm going through and adding my shading, um, which is really just like to the bottom left is how I usually do it. Um, I didn't realize how much the R81 was really going to lift up the other colors. Um, so after I was done, I did end up going back in to just the main body because he felt a little bit too light to me. And so I just went back in and added in more RV55 and more RV, um, what is that, 66. From here, we're going to move on to the fish. I did color the snail, but I didn't like the snail. And that's going to happen sometimes, guys. It's it's no big deal. You just stamp another one and color it. That's the beauty of stamps. They're an investment. You can stamp that thing as many times as you need to. Um, so for these fish, I knew it was going to be on that mostly blue background. I wanted there to be some like really bright colors. Orange is the complementary color to blue. So I know that that would work really well. And then I wanted them to be like multicolored. And so I knew the orange, um, orange yellow combination would work really well with the pink. And then I also added in a little bit of purple as well. For my whale here, when you look at the, um, the watercolor background, it's more teal at the top, but it's that very strong blueprint sketch at the bottom. And so that's what I was kind of playing off of. The blue, I picked these particular blues because they do mimic that look of the blueprint sketch. So just when, you know, when you're going through and coloring, um, you know, different things and, and making multiple backgrounds like this, you do have a little bit of room to kind of play with color. And I would absolutely recommend that you do that. A lot of times people will ask me, like, how do you come up with your color combinations or how do you um, know which colors are going to look good together? And sometimes you you know because they're complementary colors so you know that yellow and purple are going to look together you know that um you know pink and green are going to look good together for my little whale i wanted his belly to be lighter so i did go in with the colorless blender and just blend that up toward the darker blue um but so those those things are fairly obvious that they that they will look good together but otherwise um just kind of play around play around on a scrap piece of paper and and put your markers um out or if you swatch things a lot of people swatch things i don't swatch anything because i ain't got time to do that um but if you swatch your distress oxides play around with the colors that you can pair together for this octopus um i wanted the underneath of his little tentacles to be lighter because I wanted to put on the little, um, I, I knew I wanted to draw in like the little suckers with the, with a white gel pen. So for his body, I am making his body darker. You're not going to see any of that lightest color. And I'm putting the majority of his darker color on the tops of his legs. And you're definitely going to want to take that all the way up, especially for the ones that are in, like drawn in the back that are coming out from underneath his body. Those would absolutely be darker. Anywhere um, where the tentacles kind of dip down is going to be darker. Um, and then I just added a little bit of shading kind of to the top of his head, not because it was necessary, but because I felt like it needed to be all matchy-matchy. And sometimes I have a problem with that. Would it have been fine just leaving his body the VO4? Yeah, it probably would have. He probably didn't even need any shading up there. But decisions were made. I did what I did. 
So now I'm going to just, all you know, that lightest color just on the tentacle, just blend that in. I did have a little bit of trouble blending in the top of his head, so I had to go back over that. We're moving on to Mr. Turtle now. And um, I picked some BGs for um, my little turtle, and he's so stinking cute, and I love his little shell. But I wanted to add a little bit of detail to his shell. So um, I'm doing the blending again. Um, you know, usually it's down and to the bottom left, but because of the direction he's facing, I decided to go more toward the bottom right. And then I'm also going to just draw in on his shell just a very generic rounded like squares or rectangles so that it gives his shell a little bit of texture. It doesn't have to be anything that is perfect or, I mean, we're not trying to be Picasso here, guys. Um, and I think a lot of times people think, well, I can't draw, so... I'm not even going to try to do that. Just it's, It is really just very general shapes. I'm certainly not illustrating anything. That is for sure. So anyway, back to the, the coloring portion of it. Um, don't be afraid to kind of play around with your colors, you know, with your, with your swatches. For him, I originally started out with blue greens and, you know, just went through all of those colors. But I really wanted there to be some differentiation between him and his shell. Um... So I picked out two other um, greens that are actually in the green family that kind of play nicely with the blue greens. And then I colored his shell with that as well, um, just so that they would play nice together because they are similar colors. They're next to each other on the color wheel. Um, but the, just so that his shell would be a little bit different, kind of stand out from the rest of his body. For this starfish... I originally started shading the starfish with some warm grays, and I didn't like it. So then I covered the whole thing in my YO2 from my fish, um, just to give it some brightness. And now I'm going to go back in with some browns. Um, starfish are brown. I wanted something that was going to be a little bit of a brighter color, which is why I put the kind of like the yellow undercoating under there. And then I'm really just adding shading kind of where... Um, the outside of his legs are. Originally, I didn't put it on all of the areas, and then I realized I didn't really like it, so I went back in, and just where kind of like that V is of his legs meeting, I did add some more shading. I left his, um, like the outside edges, like where you can tell it's the underneath. I did leave those with just one coat of the lightest color so that that would look a little different. I had to stamp another snail. I told you I didn't like the first one. Um, and I ended up going with those same browns, um, the same E colors for his body. And then for his shell, I think the problem that I had with the first one, it was it got a little bit of mud. It got very muddy. Um, so here I was like, I'm just sticking to one color family. I did want to add some detail to his shell. So I'm a paper turner. A lot of times with Copics, um, it can be hard to get a good angle. Don't be afraid to turn your paper if it's going to give you a better angle. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I also, um, in doing that little detail, I'm doing like little C shapes, but I am following the shape of his shell and it's easier for me to do if I turn the paper. So because it is his shell looks, you know, in that, um, that circle shape, that swirl shape, I am adding shading to that swirl first and foremost and then doing the little C shapes all around. I'm going to go back into some of these with the colorless blender to kind of pick up some color. I did it on the whale for his little spots, and then I also did it on the turtle shell um, to break up some of that color. I'm going to go back in with a white gel pen and add lots of details. Um, sometimes it's stripes, sometimes it's dots. Um, for the octopus, I added in those, like I told you before, I wanted to add in like the little sticky parts on the underneath. And then I do like to outline all of my images um, just because I like a bold black line. So I did that. If you're going to do this, you want to make sure you do it before you do your die cutting because chasing those things around to outline is a nightmare. Um, so now I'm just putting my dies in place to go ahead and run that through my big shot. These line up really, really nicely. I didn't even really have to think about it. Um, just because they're such nice, simple shapes. For the sentiments on these, I originally was like, well, I'm just stamp them in black. And then it didn't have enough weight to to um, 
carry some of my cards. So instead I opted to do some heat embossing. I've been treating this with my um, anti-static powder bag on, and this is Simon's Stamp Black Cardstock. I have all my sentiments lined up. I'm gonna stamp them all in Versamark and heat emboss them in white. And I'm doing this so I can um, trim that out into little labels. And it was just easier to just line them up and do them all at one time. So I'm going to sprinkle on that embossing powder. And then um, I always have my heat gun heating up while I'm doing all the rest of it. And then that way it decreases the amount of warping that I'm going to get. Here you can see that I originally stamped that in black. I didn't like it. I popped up all of my sentiments on uh, some foam tape. And then all of my critters were also popped up. For this particular card, I glued down some of the fish flat and popped some of them up. But for the rest of them, they're all going to be popped up. Here you can see where, look at my paper tour. My paper tour when I um, was removing my washi tape from my die. That's my own fault. I know washi tape isn't the best option, but I am too lazy to go buy low-tack painter's tape and then I pay for it. So be very aware if you're going to use washi tape, make sure you remove the majority of the stick off of it. You can do that by, you know, sticking it to your hand a couple of times, but even then, honestly, you're running the risk. It's probably better to just have the right tools. Um, I glued all of the watercolor pieces down flat to each one of my um, card bases, uh, and then I just let the dimension be with the... Um, the critters and the sentiment. I put these all together and then I did go back in and add some um, clear sequins on each one of them. This one has the most clear sequins because I was trying to fill in the gaps between those circles. Um, but they did all end up with that. I always like to go back in once they're all adhered with some glossy accents and just add that on top so I make sure that they're super secure for if I ever actually mail them, which I don't but I should. Um, I'm going to use um, just some clear glitter pen here on all of my characters. And then this is kind of just like a, a really brief snapshot of each one of these cards. Um, I think they're super fun um, for summer coming up and just a great way to kind of use up those scraps that you might have. Um, or give us a card set. That'd be great, um, you know, because each one kind of has like an encouraging sentiment and just I really loved making them. So those are all of the cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.